Hello, everybody, and welcome to Libromancy, a podcast about the magic of books. I'm Josh, and today I'm going to be talking about Water's Wrath by Elise Kova, the fourth book in the Air Awakened series. So let's release the magic of books. This was a fun book. I really enjoyed it. This book makes me so much happier than the last book. Not necessarily from an ending point of view, because the end of the book was incredibly incredible, but be from a different standpoint that we'll try and get into more in spoiler territory. But to keep it a little bit non-spoilery, I'm just glad this is like the middle part middle part of the series that you always want your characters to have, where you want them, like this is not going to really spoil it, but to, to figure themselves out a little bit more. And I loved it for that. I love that for that. I love how much we learn about the magic. I love the character change. I mean, just the lore, the exposition that we get, it never feels bad. It makes sense because our main character, Hall, still doesn't know a whole lot because let's just face it, she's been rushed from book one to book two to book three, and now we're in book four, and she finally doesn't have a war and, like, death looming over her at every chance. So I am all for it. So the last book, I I was really feeling the teen drama, and this book, I am not feeling the teen drama as much. It's still there, but it's much better than it was in the last book. The last book, especially the end, I hate you, you can never love me, I never loved you, just full drama and everybody knows it and that was the point because they are teenagers and they're still figuring stuff out but this book was like ah so good and i would like to say that i think elise Kovas has done really well with herself with some foreshadowing from the earlier books i think if i was to go back i would see certain hints for things that happen in this book i don't want to reveal them yet but i i did call them i did see them as they were happening not exactly as usual but i did see some things that i was like aha this is gonna be a trick I think Elise Kova continues to write great characters, amazing teenage characters, and and, and great descriptions and scenery, and just the emotions in this book were very, very strong. I also like that while this book has a good plot that takes up kind of the second half to the last quarter of the book, this book still has movement and progression. Even if nothing's really happening on screen, there are still things going on that we know about and that we're hearing and seeing that are instrumental for the characters and the actual story to continue. So again, I just, I loved this book. It was a big step up from the third book for me. I loved just, I I feel like I got over that teenage angst and drama in this book that it's still there, but it's at a much more manageable level. So with that said, I think we're just going to have to move right into spoilers because there's so much to talk about. Let's talk. Let's start with characters, of course. And we're going to talk about Valhalla. Now, Valhalla, I'm glad she took some time off. She went west. She kind of just relaxed. She just kind of went back to work with somebody. You know, she's kind of got taken care of. That was really funny seeing when that kind of happened. She like figures that out. And I'm just glad that she kind of figured her life out. She's like, what do I want? I want to be free. I want there to be peace. I want, you know, and then, of course, she's still like, and I still love the prince, but I can't say that I love the prince because how dare I love the prince? He was only assigned a marriage that he didn't want. Like, clearly, he has no more feelings for me. and Clearly, he hates me, but... It was really nice to see her finally cool off and let herself love the prince. She's still, I don't want to say, she's oddly naive and not naive at the same time. She's very like, everybody's out to get me. They always are. I can't trust anybody. But then at the same time, and this is spoiler, so we're going to spoil everything, right? She like 100% trusts Victor and is like, oh yeah, Victor would never lie to me. And like, I get that he, you know... Like, you wouldn't think he would lie to you because he's the head of the Tower of the Sorcerers. But at the same time, like, why are you so against the the senators or, the you know, these people that you're like... Because she even says on the crowd, she's like, yeah, the crowd loves me today, but tomorrow they could hate me. I have to be so careful. It's like, why don't you apply the same thing to Victor or any of these other people who've taken advantage of you? And sometimes the answer to that is because it's a book and we need things to happen. And that's fine. But I was just like, sometimes it was just a little threw me off a little bit, but I still love Valhalla. I'm glad she didn't have to cut her hair this scene. She didn't go with a full new identity, but I'm really glad that she learned. She figured herself out. She's like, I maybe overreacted, and I'm so glad that my ship of Aldrich and Valhalla is sailing off into the distance and that everything, well, I can't say that everything is hunky-dory at the end of this book, but it's they're together at the very least, right? They figured it out, and they're going to be together. So let's go straight to Victor. 
man. Very well done character here. I think I can't remember exactly, but I think there's even hints in the first book about how Victor is like, oh yeah, sorcerers are superior above commons. And now he is just taking that and running with it. And he is, I just, I knew he was bad. As soon as he said something like, he said, he said his goal was to free the sorcerers. And I was like, uh, it's not just to free the sorcerers though. You said, he said, put the sorcerers above. I don't like that kind of tone in your voice, Victor. You get that out of here. And so I thought, I did not see the triple betrayal where he's betraying the king or the emperor and Valhalla and the world. I kind of just was like, okay, he's just going to betray Valhalla and he's going to have her fix this axe so it's not, you know, straight evil super corrupting right now. And he's going to siphon that power into the crystals that she tells him to do, that she's putting, he's telling her to put it in. And then he's going to take that and make weapons for the emperor. And that's how he'll have the Windwalker controlled, right? And that's what I was going for. I was like, oh, that's going to be so good. I'm going to wait for this reveal. I was not expecting, oh, by the way, I'm taking all power and your power, which we didn't even know was a thing that could happen with the crystals, except for that crystals can do anything? Question mark. I was very impressed with that whole scene, though. His, not his reasoning, but him planning it all out and using her power and taking it so that he's immune to the crystal itself because a lot of people when they get to the crystals they are not smart enough to think oh wait but i'm going to get corrupted too because everybody always thinks they're immune even if they aren't so but i i knew i knew when victor came to get her yeah you know uh, illusioned as aldrich i was like that is not aldrich that is somebody else and i just have to put it out there using the word rose to the clue of what's the most beautiful right before it dies is like the worst past word ever ever anybody who knows aldrich and Valhalla's little relationship and is gonna figure that clue out in like 10 seconds granted uh, victor could have just been hiding there invisible and it wouldn't have mattered what the code word was but like rose was so simple i did not i didn't believe it for a second well i i mean i didn't believe that it was secure for a second how about that i mean as an it guy you gotta have you know 24 digits capital letters no, I'm just teasing. That would be horrible in a book. Here's, what's your password? Okay, it's capital A, Z, T, 3, capital Q, shift Z. Oh, what's a shift? I don't know. I mean, sorry, that was just a silly, but like, I was like, that's not cool. So I liked Victor's character though. Uh, I'm very interested to see what he's got going on next because, you know, at the very end we see he's sending emissaries of dead people who are being controlled by crystals and they are attacking people and proclaiming his reign. And... While we're talking about proclaiming his reign, they're also talking about the fact that Emperor Solaris is dead and is the white his wife is dead. And I was like, ah, I'm not gonna He's also claiming the Windwalker and Aldrich are dead, and we both know we all know they're not dead. So I'm gonna hold off on saying that Solaris is dead until the uh till I see his body. But I really feel like Emperor Solaris lost a lot of his bite with this one. That he is just he was kinda out, and that's fine. I loved it. I loved having him not be the main antagonist and being like, I hate you because you're a Windwalker and I can't figure out how to make people endeared to me so that they'll do good things for me like I want. But And then learning that he wants to try and take over the Crescent Continent, which we haven't even heard of before, who have more stronger, who, the more stronger, who have stronger and better magic than the people here. The people here who are the, the cast-offs who can only do elemental magic. Sure, you just get a wipe those people out with the more advanced magic. That's sure. Mm -hmm. I'll believe you, Emperor Solaris. You are out i mean he's out of his mind first off if he thinks that but like that conquering that conquest goal he has it's just crazy like give it up man give it up okay we're really quick we're gonna talk about eggman and he's the head senator if you don't remember but like why do you give a warning if it's not really a warning hey you know Valhalla, you know that i hate you and i know that i hate you so i'm going to give you this very vague and unsettling warning but not enough clues to actually tell you anything what what? Like, oh yes, it's either you or the world. Well, what is that supposed to mean? I have to just go die or the whole world will die? Yes. What? What is that? Like, what am I going to do? I, I know what's going to happen, but I can't tell you. Or I won't tell you because I still hate you. It's just, come on, Egg, but if you really cared and you knew kind of what would happen, you would say something like, hey, by the way, I think someone's going to try and take you to the Crystal Caverns and use your power to get in and use that power for evil. Versus like, hey, don't ever think you can kill the Crystal Caverns because that's the source of all magic. Well, that's another thing I was thinking. Like, so let's go ahead. Let's say Victor was true. And like, we'll just kill the Crystal Caverns. If the Crystal Caverns are partially the source of like all magic and the fact that these four 
items, the axe, the sword, the crown, and the scythe, are distributed to each one. Each land had its own, and they kind of brought back, brought into being the people's style of magic. As in, like, Earth had the axe, and that's to the north, and the sword was fire in the west, right? The sword of Jadar. And then I'm not sure where the crown or the scythe were. It might mention it, but I, I don't remember exactly. And so they had more earthbenders, not earthbenders, but... Earth, well, I don't remember what they are. I'm sorry, but the uh, Earth was in the su- was in the north, and the fire bearers are in the west. So if you kill the crystal cavern, which is powering the weapons, which is bringing people's magic, then won't magic fade away, and there'll be no more magic? Hmm? It's just a thought, but I, that's what I was like. Oh, maybe this isn't the, the smartest idea. But obviously, that was not Victor's true goal, which we saw. So let's let's move on, Eggman. You should have just been a little bit more specific, like. It's not you or the world. It's any Windwalker or the world, right? It's not not one or the other here. Now, let's talk about Balder. Kalis Gova as I like I'm accepting Balder. I'm loving him. And then you go and kill him. And that was quite rude. And I didn't like it one bit. I definitely didn't like the character growth that happens and the very emotional scene of him dying and the feelings of grief and of sadness and of loss. How dare you again? I couldn't. Ah, it was so good. So well written. The way Aldrich reacts to his death. The fact that during Baldair's death, they almost didn't let Aldric in to see him because they're like, oh, the crown prince has to be protected. He can't visit his brother who's dying. Yes, I know. Potential sickness. And I love that they were all wearing masks. And I was like, haha, this is funny because this definitely wasn't written. When this was written, this was definitely not a thing. But like, you know, controversy or whatever. But I was like, just let Aldric in. It's his brother. And they have this heart to heart. And then... I just was so amazing. And then he's in depression mode. And he's like, Valhalla, you still wouldn't love me if you knew the truth. I caused the Crystal Caverns War. And it's like, um, Aldric, first off, no, you didn't. You were a young boy being told by the head of the sorcerers and the, you know, future head of the sorcerers that you had to do this to be a man to prove your love and that you would save everybody. Now, were you totally misled? 100%. But that's not your fault. That is totally Eggman's and Victor's fault. Like, you cannot be blamed for thinking you're doing the right thing when you don't know that you're not doing the right like in this instance like he literally thought he was doing the right thing and gonna help people there was no way for him to know how bad he was gonna it was gonna have things were gonna change right and what was my other thought about that also i don't remember if this was right before or right after but this that was before i'm pretty sure but the scene about aldrich and baldera's children talking to baldera's mother that was painful i mean i have a great relationship with my mom so i can't relate to it 100 percent. but like I, I it was so good i was like oh my gosh no wonder aldrich you know, want somebody to love him and he's always he is the way he is like look what he grew up with and and so i just that scene was so heartbreaking and so good i don't do it again elise kova if you kill another character that i like in the fifth book i i'm gonna keep reading your books because i'm enjoying them but i'm definitely not gonna like it so and I just have to mention Jax the Undying, who I keep forgetting is a fire bearer. I don't know why I keep forgetting this, but every time he uses fire bearing, I'm like, oh yeah, he's a fire bearer, because it just doesn't make sense in my mind. Uh, so I was like, oh yeah, he's dead. And then he's like totally alive. And I'm like, what? And then it's like, oh yeah, he's a sorcerer, so he's got the little bit faster healing anyway. Plus he's got, you know, he burned his wound so he wouldn't bleed out. Very good. I love that. But no more death. You hear me? No, no more. And I think that's all for really the main characters that I wanted to hit. And I wanted to just say, oh, I feel like, I was talking about this earlier, but the axe, the sword, the scythe, and the crown, I feel like we need a fifth item. I don't know why, but well, I mean, I know why. It's because we have earth, fire, water, and air. And because I grew up with Captain Planet, I feel like we need one for spirit or soul or something. So that's what, we need another one. And maybe Valhalla will find that. And Oh my gosh, I could not believe that she actually lost her magic at the end. That she's just a regular Valhalla librarian again. And I love that Aldrich was like, this doesn't change anything. I still want you even though our bond is gone and you've been ripped of all your magic. And he's like, I still love you for you. And I was like, yes, you didn't make the dumb decision. You didn't push her away out of a meaning, like trying to protect her because she's lost her magic. So you push her away or something like you guys did it. You are making it. I love it. So and I was so glad after like, I don't know how many people told Valhalla, 
But they're like, hey, maybe you should give Aldrich a chance. Maybe you should keep going after Aldrich if you like him that much. You know, I really feel like you still like Aldrich. You should probably go, you know, prove that you're worthy to him or show the, you know, show his parents, whoever they might be, because the people who don't know who she's pining after, obviously. Like, go show them what he's missing, or what you, how cool you are, and they'll be like, oh man, that was dumb of us. Like, why didn't we think to keep her in? And, and again, it just... <laughs> Okay, I gotta talk about this, but she's kidnapped by Shur again. And it's like, Valhalla, you are very competent and very capable. Why do you make the dumbest decisions ever sometimes? And I just don't get you sometimes. Yes, saving Jax's life was amazing, but like, you didn't... I mean, he technically saved his own life there. But, like, why would you believe him that he would do that? And why not... Would you kill them, just be like, hey, they're Knights of Jadar. You know, the King of the West is going to side with you. And he's going to be like, yep, these are Knights of Jadar. They're trying to kill the Windwalker who just won us a war. Bad Knights of Jahar, right, Jadar? Or just kill Shnar. I mean, I'm glad you did, finally, and that was amazing. And I was really curious about that. Like, who did the fire? Was it that person that she saw? Or was it because she had Aldrich's magic because their bond had deepened that Aldrich could sense it and kind of push the flame through? Or because she was in danger, she could finally, it like, came out of the bond or came out of his watch, like the watch he gave her, like it was a special charge. Very curious about what happened there. But I loved it and I didn't feel the need to like dig into it. So, But that's everything I have to talk about today about Water's Wrath, the fourth book in the Air Awakened series. Next one is Crystal Crown, and that'll be the end. So thanks, everybody, for listening, and thanks to David Hillowitz for the intro and outro music. Of course, if you have any questions, comments, things you think I missed, you can always send those to LibromancyPod at gmail.com. Please like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts from. And I do have a Patreon if you'd like to support the show. So, yeah, you can check that out. And remember to release the magic of books.